The challenge today for Brian Kelly's team, the UMass Minutemen. It's about your mindset and your focus and your ability to take care of your business. Enjoy this win. You earned it. It's hard to win in college football. You're 4-0. We got four of them. Hey, it's a third of the way done. We got two thirds left. And it starts right after we finish celebrating this one. We start with puns. Welcome, Irish fans, to this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Football with Brian Kelly. I'm Jack Nolan. UMass hung with Notre Dame until late in the first half when the Irish took control with two touchdowns in the final three and a half minutes of the half and went on to record a dominant 62-27 win. It was the most explosive offensive performance of the Brian Kelly era, with the 62 points being the most scored by a Notre Dame team since 1996, the 681 yards of total offense, the most for an Irish team since 1969, and the 457 rushing yards, the most for Notre Dame since 1990. Two. The rushing attack was again led by wide receiver turned running back C.J. Proceis, who ran for 149 yards and two scores. Proceis is now averaging 150 rushing yards per game this season. If he keeps this up, he will shatter the all-time Notre Dame record of 130.6 yards per game set by Vegas Ferguson in 1979. I mean, there's still things, you know, I'm still getting used to, like, just um, mostly, like, you keep my pads down and stuff like that. But, you know, I think for the most part, the, the transition has been pretty easy for me. Never would I have thought I'd be leading, leading our team in rushing and being carrying the ball as much as, as much as I am. Coming up on Inside Notre Dame Football. For somebody that has not played the position but just a few games, he just looks like a veteran in there at times. I like to look at myself as like the encourager, I guess, and just try to keep everybody positive, whatever the situation may be. It's going to be a battle. It's going to go right down to the end. It's going to take everything you have. Let's go play this game. Yeah. Inside Notre Dame Football with Brian Kelly is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame Partners, Sprint, Coke Zero, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame football is also sponsored by Delta Airlines, proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics, Bank of America, Cadillac, Canon, Xfinity, Meyer, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Sirius XM Satellite Radio, and UPS. as a whole in the game how do you think they played well I thought we you know certainly did the things necessary for us to win the game and that is first and foremost control the line of scrimmage you know you never want to turn the ball over you know we turned the ball over one time and gave them pretty good field position uh, but all in all I thought we played well in terms of you know controlling the line of scrimmage you know making the plays that we needed to we really put Deshaun I thought in a position where you know we could manage the offense without having him you know, be the guy that needed to make the big plays. We put it on the backs of our offensive line, uh, our veteran receivers, and uh, what is now turning to be uh, uh, a deep and talented running back here. CJ Proceis is having an amazing year, another big game for him, and he gets you that first score that was very important at that part in the game. I think, you know, a lot of people will talk about his speed, but, you know, um, what he did on that, that particular run was he set up the blocking so well. For somebody that has not played the position um, but just a few games, he just looks like a veteran in there at times. And, um, and then again, you know, he's able to run away from you know, most defenders, and um, you know, that's, a, that's a pretty potent uh, punch. I know you wanted to get Brandon Wimbush in early, preferably in the first half. The game didn't allow it. Right. But when he got in, he did some really impressive things. Well, he's got arm talent. He's got uh, physical ability. You know, I thought he did a nice job of, uh, you know, going into the first time and not being overwhelmed. Uh, one thing we do know, he's a very, very gifted athlete. Uh, we saw that on the long throw to uh, Will Fuller. We saw that on the long run for a touchdown. There's a lot there that uh, makes you excited about what 
he can be. Um, it just takes some time and we'll continue to polish him, but uh, it, was, it was great to get him in and get some work. Good day for your receivers as well, and I want to point out one guy who's having a great year, although he's overshadowed by Will Fuller, and that's Chris Brown. Catching a lot of footballs, uh, making plays, uh, you know, especially yards after the catch, and I think that that's an important thing as well. And he's in there blocking, he's doing the little things right for us, and you know, he's been he's been really the leader of that group all summer. And I think you know we had to lean on him a little bit yesterday, and he came up big for us. And Fronapple scrambles, buys some time, and then will be sacked back at midfield. You, of course, know your fan base is concerned that UMass was able to score, but I want your evaluation of that defensive performance. Well, you know, I think we did some good things at times, you know, and I guess that's really the one thing. Defensively, you know, we got off the field when we needed to in, in certain situations, and, you know, we gave up two big plays that, that you know, obviously you shouldn't give up. But I think it's mostly about uh, settling down and playing the kind of defense necessary. We did that in the second half, and. You know, they got a score late against, you know, some of our young kids uh, that are still learning. We don't like the fact that we gave up a couple of big plays in the first half. I like the way we settled down in the second. Sheldon Day is having a great year and he had a huge sack for you. It was a big sack at a, at a time where we needed to get them out of field position. And, you know, just Sheldon's been a great leader for us and uh, he's playing hard each and every snap and, and sets a real, you know, good tone for, you know, our younger defensive line. We've got a lot of young defensive linemen that are easily influenced by our veterans and I think Sheldon is sending the right message each and every day. We cannot talk about this game without talking about special teams. Good day for your special teams and let's start with the punt return for touchdown. You know, as you know, it started with uh, a great punt, but Tyler Newsom knocked the ball down inside the five. And, we had a great defensive stop to keep it inside the five, which you know obviously affected the punt. We did a great job with our holdup team. We held them up, and, and then CJ found his way into the end zone off of a great block by Greer Martini that got him into the end zone. So that touchdown was a result of a great punt and then a great defensive effort and then everybody coming together on that punt return. You told me down in Culver you thought you would be able to flip the field this season with Tyler. You certainly did against UMass. I think that punt in itself, flipping the field position and then, you know, getting the ball. We're going to get the ball minimum. Even if we don't even return the ball, we're going to get the ball inside their, you know, 40 yard line. Those are huge hidden yardage pieces that your special teams impact. And I think we're doing a great job on our kickoff coverage. I think, you know, anytime you're keeping teams inside 20 yards in terms of returns, that, that's a pretty good day. He's not the fastest, not the strongest, not the tallest, like, but for some reason he makes plays a, always around the ball and that's what's exciting about me. He just makes plays. That is the best way to describe what Notre Dame defensive back and captain Matthias Farley does on the field, but it does not come close to describing the impact the graduate student has on his team off the field as a friend, a confidant, and a leader. Farley has always done whatever the coaching staff has asked him to do. Sometimes he starts, sometimes he excels on special teams, and sometimes he is asked to be the next man in as he was when Drew Tranquil went down against Georgia Tech. So the Irish and Jackets play on here in the second half, and there is Farley in for Tranquil, out injured. He's been a guy that has always come up with the big play, the big turnover, a fumble recovery, the big interception. Running wide, trying to get upfield is Thomas, and he fumbles the ball. Notre Dame picks it up. It could go. And finally, a tackle is made inside the 20 on Jalen Smith. Matthias Farley turned him back in. Jalen makes the tackle and strip. Ever since fall camp, people have been telling me this Georgia Tech team coming in here, that's the game to circle. It was 30 to 7. What does that say about this team? It really shows that guys are, are bought in, and a game like that, you know, against Georgia Tech, everyone has to do their job. It's such an assignment game, and you have to trust that the guy on the outside, on the inside, he's going to do his, and he's going to fit the right way so you can play fast, and I think holistically everybody did that. Uh, we're going to announce the captains. Uh, I looked at it and, and said, I want somebody that is not just a specialist, but somebody that represents everything in this football program. There was no question who the next guy was, and he just happened to have the most votes as special teams as well, and that was Matthias Farley. Four out of 11 
starters on defense are captains. What's different about the way all of you guys lead? Joe's obviously the, probably the most vocal out of everybody. Jalen is just a freak, so that's, <laughs> you know, he doesn't have to say a whole lot. He, he plays possessed. Sheldon obviously is just a force on, on the front. He's done an incredible job getting the D-line whipped into shape. He's vocal, but in a, in a, in a different way. He just makes sounds a lot. <laughs> <laughs> He'll, go, he'll yell or something, and I think uh, you know that gives everybody a ton of energy. And he just has this this focus in his eyes at all times that you can look to him like, all right, Sheldon's locked in, we gotta go. I like to look at myself as like the encourager, I guess, and just try to keep everybody positive, whatever the situation may be. Blow the home run ball way downfield, tipped by Notre Dame and intercepted by Cole Luke. And the tip was um, uh, Matthias Farley. Farley, and that's the first interception of the year. You guys get the opportunity to go out, give back to the community. I don't think you, you've said no once. And there's always some selfies of you there. You always seem to be having a great time. How important is that to you? I think it's, it's huge. You know, we're on a platform as student athletes at Notre Dame that a lot of people are looking at us. So there's a lot of eyes on us. And, you know, you never know the impact you can have on somebody's day, life, you know, outlook on whatever. If you just go say, what's up, or spend some time, go bowling. I remember, when I was little, my brother's football friends would come over and I was like, oh man, y'all are <laughs> you know, bigger than life. And so it's just understanding the platform, I think, that we have here to do things that are so positive that you might not be able to have the same impact if you were just not a student athlete. Favorite class? Poetry. One thing the public would be surprised to learn about you. I was born in Kansas. Where is your favorite spot on the Notre Dame campus? Grotto. Thoughts on the plans for a video board inside Notre Dame Stadium? What the people want. The program training led by Marines. Uh, very cool. Navy SEAL Marcus Luttrell. Unbelievable. Player on the team most like you? Hunter Bevan. What does it mean to be re-elected a Notre Dame captain? Pride. Best nickname on the team and who has it? Ronnie Stanley, Fern. Toughest player to block on the team? Sheldon Day. Best singer on the team? Mm, Jared Grace. Best dancer on the team? Tron Jones. Best comedian on the team? Devin Butler. Best dresser on the team? Matthias Farley. Worst dresser on the team? Ryan Stanley. Best thing about playing for Notre Dame? Tradition. Nick Martin, for the final time, you have completed the 60-second drillman inside Notre Dame football. Thank you. Thank you. Skeptics abounded from coast to coast as the top 10 ranked Notre Dame football team prepared to take on the high powered triple option attack of Georgia Tech in this season's third game. The Fighting Irish found themselves in the unusual situation of being designated the underdog in a home game despite being the higher ranked team. As this edition of Watch ND's Irish Connection shows, those skeptics helped fuel an impressive Notre Dame performance on both sides of the football. Beautiful day in northern Indiana. This is the biggest challenge certainly for Notre Dame so far this season. Georgia Tech coach Paul Johnson has been game planning for months for this meeting with Notre Dame. As for Georgia Tech, this is a spread option offense which is as good as it gets. Notre Dame an underdog on the home field winning football starts in the locker room. This is a big ball game with national ramifications. That's why you're here at Notre Dame. Are you ready? Better. Let's attack. It's Notre Dame football today. Let's go play it the right way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. This is the beginning of that time. We're going to find out if there is still championship life left in Notre Dame season. This spread option offense has been confusing opponents for more than three decades. A handoff rolling out. Here's a pitch. What a tackle by Notre Dame for a loss. An open field hit by Drew Tranquil, who lit up the pitch man. And Notre Dame slams the door. Hey, Drew. Corner across Notre Dame from speech for Will Fuller. It's about 12 yards off him. Here's a long ball of Fuller. He still beats him. Downfield. It's gone. Touchdown. Notre Dame. Kaiser to Fuller. Delivers again.
And that was Drew Tranquil all the way downfield. And now he's down on the ground. Boy. Drew Tranquil's had an excellent game today. So Notre Dame, an underdog, according to the alleged experts, on their home field, leading the game 13-7. to There is a lot of football left. It's going to be a battle. It's going to go right down to the end. It's going to take everything you have. You've got two hours. Two hours to do something that nobody believes you can do. Let's go play this game. Good fake, and he drops the ball. It's loose, and there's Jalen Smith. He fumbles the ball. Notre Dame picks it up. It could go. And finally, a tackle is made inside the 20 on Jalen Smith. Kaiser looking at blitzers and breaking Notre Dame in the open field. On his way, he could be gone. The race is on. And C.J. Procise is a clear winner. Touchdown, Notre Dame, 91 yards. Come here, boy. You savage, man. The game ball goes to our defense, but I want to give it to Drew Tranquil. Drew set the tone in the way we play defensively in the first half, the way we need to play defensively, playing with everything that he had. We just got to finish this. It's time now for the experts at TireRack.com question of the week for Coach Kelly. This week's question comes from Matthew Yule of Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Coach, do you ever bring in officials for practice to help eliminate penalties in games? In spring ball, we bring them in. Uh, we bring them in preseason camp. Uh, matter of fact, we, uh, we even bring in a full crew from the ACC and uh, have them in for an entire weekend and then we do a, a, a talk with them relative to new uh, rules, interpretations, any questions that we may have. Uh, so we do spend quite a bit of time with the officials so we have a thorough knowledge of uh, you know, not only the rules but certain situations that occur during the game. So it's very important that we have them there. Next up for the Irish, another huge road challenge as Notre Dame heads down to South Carolina to take on an undefeated and 12th ranked Clemson team that will have more than two weeks to prepare for Notre Dame's second ever visit to Memorial Stadium. Well, we go on the road, you know, in, into a, a, a you know, great college environment at Clemson, a very talented football team. You know, our guys know what the schedule looked like. This is going to be one of those, those great challenges. And, uh, I know they're excited about it. Last year it was going to Florida State. This year it'll be going to Clemson. Uh, it'll be on national TV. Our kids will be excited, and uh, we're playing a very good football team. But, but this is why you come to Notre Dame, is to, to play these kinds of games. Coach Kelly and I will break down the Clemson game on next week's show. Until then, thanks so much for watching, and as always, go Irish. Inside Notre Dame Football with Brian Kelly is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame Partners, Sprint, Coke Zero, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame Football is also sponsored by Delta Airlines, proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics, Bank of America, Cadillac, Canon, Xfinity, Meyer, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Sirius XM Satellite Radio, and UPS.